Okay, wonderful. Let's start. I'm Sasha, and I'm really excited to have you here in my session. And I promise you it's the best session. I'm not lying. <laughs> you can judge me afterward. But I have something really cool for you today. And uh, first, a question to you, the audience. Who of you is more developer-minded? Is a developer? And so. Okay, a few, a few, I see. Wonderful. Who is more DevOps? Not that much. Okay, one. Okay. And who is here for the beer? <laughs> Perfect. That's a good. <laughs> that's a good start. Okay. So Kubernetes. I think everybody of you at least heard about Kubernetes and use Kubernetes, maybe in your corporate as well. And uh, I think the last manager or the company now understand Kubernetes is the way to go. That that's give us more freedom for developer teams and DevOps team to do what they want. They don't have to request anything, firewall rules and uh, processes, so they, they have Kubernetes and you have a little bit of freedom, freedom to deploy what you want, multiple version of application and so on. The most companies have already started to implement it or already have it. So actually, mission accomplished, anything done. Everybody happy? No. No, you are not happy. At least Infosys, Infoworld, Infoworld says you are not happy. The developers are not happy. So, hands up. Who, which developer is not happy? Hands up. You're happy? You're, you're kidding. <laughs> My whole story counts that you're not happy. So, Infoworld says you're not happy, so you cannot be happy. So you need to be unhappy, or at least pretend to be. Can you look a little bit, your developer, can you look a little bit sad? It's just a, a typical, you know, a sad expression, uh, a sad-looking developer, L like that, like that. Look, this, this is a sad-looking developer, he's not happy. And she's right. Well, okay, usually, I used to be a developer for my own for 25 years, and uh, a developer's actually never happy, <laughs> you know. Too, too few coffee, too bad coffee, I have to buy a cup of coffee, and, uh, and uh, no beer or whatever. But usually a developer is never happy. You have to make, things are not working, the processes go too slow, you know, you need to have a ticket for that, you have to wait for an approval, you have to wait for a database access, you have to actually wait, okay? So, before I come to VMware was Pivotal. Maybe you heard Pivotal is very big in uh, Java Spring. And uh, we do a lot of Pivotal labs. So we, we really live it with pair programming and uh, customer-centric design and uh, uh, lean methodology and the culture part. Okay, that's very important. And we asked our customers recently and they said, what the developer typically is doing the whole day? And guess, 80% of the time he's waiting. 80% he's waiting. And many corporates, large corporates, they say, okay, I give him Kubernetes, and then he, start, he stops complaining. <laughs> he gets happy. <laughs> the, idea was, the idea was good. To be honest, the idea was good, but uh, most companies have not implemented it very well. Because you cannot just put a Kubernetes on your corporate network and hope anything comes great because you have to adjust the processes as well. So you cannot have a, a manual release process with Kubernetes. Well, you can, but it's not effective. It, it doesn't help you. And the, the second problem is the developer itself. So we have developers that are really eager to make new stuff, to build their containers for their own. They compile the software themselves. They deploy Kubernetes. They make a de uh, Kubernetes deployment, a uh, hundred lines YAML deployment. For that. They, they love to do it. But actually, it's not their job. Their job is to code. And they don't need to care if Kubernetes is underneath or not. And that's the problem. And other developers, they, go, they don't care about Kubernetes and Docker at all. They, they born and grow with, with Java or .NET code, and they, they feel happy doing just coding. They don't care about it, okay? And the second problem is, 
most corporates they still have to have now Kubernetes, but they're still the, the old legacy CI/CD pipeline. That's the thing we did 10 years ago, 15 years ago. So they have a CI/CD pipeline. They try to centralize anything. You have Java 8, you have Tomcat. That's your tool set. You have to use it. Make your application fit to it. Hey, sorry, that's, that's bullshit. You don't do that anymore. And today, developers coming from the university, they use different frameworks, they use different tools. They don't have the flexibility. So it doesn't help if you have a Kubernetes on-prem and still the old processes and the tool chain. We need to change something. And that's the reason we are here, because I have something cool for you. First, the thing you need to do is to do Kubernetes, okay? Uh, many, many underestimate what, what it takes to do Kubernetes. You cannot just take the code, compile it, and let it run, because you have to speak about uh, the integration. So you have to, do, you, make, uh, you have to harden it. You have to, to pack, uh, you have to check about the routing, or ingress controller, the configure, API routing. You have to use about uh, scaling, how you scale your application. Auto scaling is a word. Okay, you listen up a, about a certain amount of network traffic, you scale it up or scale it down. Even your application need to be ready to be run in Kubernetes. Many applications are not ready to, to use that because you need to have a, a cloud native kind of uh, application. The same new technology are even like eventing. To, to have an event broker, you need uh, event triggers to handle it, you need a, a serverless infrastructure on top of Kubernetes as well. Some applications need that. If you go reactive and if you go microservice-based way, you need to be able to release independent microservices, not the whole software. Recently, I saw a, a developer team in a large company that said, hey, very proud, we have 20 microservices. And I asked, okay, and you have a different release team for the microservice and release them independently, so the front end and the back end? No, we release all together. I say, yeah, why you have microservice? <laughs> then you can use a monolithic, that's the same. So you have to change the concept in doing that. And that's what you do today. So what you see on the, on the chart, if you have an application you bring to Kubernetes, you have for, by, usually by hand, write the Docker file. And I used to be a developer. I know if I have a running version of a, of a Docker file, you know, with the right base image, with the right Java version, with the right Tomcat version, I let it there. But in Java and Tomcat, you have all two weeks new patches and even critical patches. You have to take care about it, you know? Recently, I saw a developer firm as well, a company as well, and I asked them, how old is your Tomcat? They said, yeah, two months. And they just Googled for it, you know? And I checked, hey, there are about 37 Tomcat patches and 12 are critical. Oh, we should do a new one, maybe. Yeah, you should. And this is the thing about Kubernetes. Actually, you shouldn't care about that stuff because you should concentrate on code. And even the DevOps people, you should not spend days or weeks to, to, to write a, a Jenkins manifest, okay? It, it should help you to do it. And that's the reason we are here. Before, what you see on the left-hand side is we have a standard platform like this Java 8 and the Tomcat platform and say, feed your application to our CICD environment. That's our tool chain. If you, if you have that Java version and that Tomcat, well, you, will, you will be fine. But would it be better if you have a, we call it a, a app-aware platform. An app-aware platform is whatever you bring, the platform makes the right choice out of it. And that's the cool thing. And it's not, the platform is a little bit misleading because it's not a platform. We at, uh, at VMware, we wrote a, a set of tools, it's all 100% open source, it's all open source tool. And you choose your Kubernetes. So what we do is you can have a Ranger, an OpenShift, you can have AV, uh, AWS, you can have Azure, I, 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 I don't care. And we install our tool set, it's all Helm charts and packages we put on it. And then you have your own dedicated CICD build chain. And what we want is you say in your application, because you know the best what your application needs, the recommendation. 
how you scale it. I want to scale it from zero to up to, to 10 nodes. Do you define how you release, you, how you make an upgrade? If you make a canary deployment, if you make a blue-green deployment, if you make a rolling update, you define the, the update strategy and the release strategy. That's a 15 line of YAML code and it fits to your application. Whatever you bring as a code, it doesn't matter. So if you have Java, it makes a Tomcat application. He builds, he compiles you the, uh, the, the code according to the, the Maven file in Java, builds you the Docker container with all supported version, including the Tomcat that fits with regular update. If you have a microservice reactive application, then a Spring Boot application, we, we build you a Spring Boot container. And we deploy it in the same way. You don't have to care. It. It's a part of the, the application. By the way, this config file, this 50 lines of outcome description, generates 3,600 lines of Java code underneath. You don't have to manage it. And this is what we actually do. Okay, this is your supply chain. And at the beginning, we call it the, the inner loop and the outer loop. Because not for every change, when you're developing, you want to trigger the big pipeline with all the stages and code scanning and signing, whatever. But if you develop, you want to test it easy. So we have an integration in your favorite uh, IDE software, like IntelliJ and Microsoft Studio for Code. And you have a plugin. So you start off a coding, and then you push the code. It will be automatically compi uh, compiled, container build it, and start in a in Kubernetes nearby. And then you don't need to touch it. You don't see the container, you don't need to touch it. You, you choose an application monitor and you see the application running. And the cool thing is you, you can connect to the API of the application, test if it works. Even you can automatically change flags. For instance, you can activate uh, uh, debugging or set the debugging level without restarting your application. Even you can test feature toggling to enable, disable the feature on runtime. You don't need to take care how it works. It even doesn't matter if the application is a serverless application, cloud native, or just a user's Kubernetes runtime, we do it for you. This is called the, the inner loop. So you can, within three minutes, make a new version of your application, deploy it, test it, make changes, deploy it, test it. If you think that the code is ready, you can push it to the outer loop. And the outer loop is the, the complete pipeline. The cool stuff is, even that is configured. It depends on your application. It's next to your source code of the application. So if you move your application from on-prem to the cloud, your CI/CD pipeline follows you. It's a dedicated pipeline. It's your pipeline. There ain't nobody that, uh, that uh, has to write the code for you, the manifest. We use as a template, it's like an iPhone. You don't need to care how it works, okay? So for instance, uh, we need a Git, is it GitHub or GitLab, we, we don't care, okay? Then uh, we have, for instance, in the middle, the second icon is Cloud Native Build Pack to compile the software. It counts any programming language from Google, Go, C++, whatever. And we have a, a, a convention and GitOps at the end. If you say, I, I don't want to, uh, we have as orchestrator, I forget that to mention, Tektron as orchestrator. If you say, I, want, I prefer to have something else like uh, GitLab, uh, uh, Jenkins, or Bamboo, then we have the pipeline pre-configured that you can change it. So actually, if you use it, the pipeline, you don't have to change or customize anything. It, it just works. But if you have the wish to, to replace the, the cloud native build packs with Paketo to something else like uh, 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 Conico, for instance, then you can change that, it's all prepared. The same for, the, for Jenkins or Babu, you just can configure it. And it's a configuration thing, it follows your application. And this is the example. So you have your build chain, but you don't need to care about the details, what you have and the stages in between. You don't need to, to make the manifest of, of Jenkins or make a, a new configuration for an application. This is done automatically. So you can concentrate on the code. But if you want, you can still look under the hood. You can open like the, uh, the, the, the engine and say, OK, I want to have an additional stage. I want to have SonarCube in between. Or I want to have a two-stage cluster, so I want pre-production and production. Or I, I want to have additional checks in it. 
which is very important, is the building of the application. We have something new. First, it's only available for Java. But what we actually do for you is we uh, scan the code, the source code, before we compile it for failures. The second is when we build the container image, we make automatically a bill of material out of it. So if you have a Java and Tomcat case, we, we get all the vulnerabilities from the base image from the container, all the vulnerabilities from the Java and from the Tomcat, and put it in the database. Next time, your boss asks you, are we affected of log4j bug? You don't have to say, I don't know, but I find out. Next time, you will say, yes, I know, we are not affected. And this is pretty cool. It's, it's really automated. And this bill of our material we put in the database, we can search for it. And as well, when we build a container, we sign it at the same time. And this is, what, this is really the cool thing. So you are not depending on a, on a static CICD pipeline you have in your co corporate. You can have your own. Okay? So the CICD pipeline needs to be installed in the Kubernetes one time. Okay, it's all open source, but the configuration, how to use it, that's a part of your application. So you typically, it's a YAML file, only one YAML file, typically 50 to 30 lines of code, and you put it in the same place where your application is, and the application will automatically compile and build. And this is the features we have. It is now, we almost finished at the time, we don't have time to show you all the features because it, it's a, a, a huge bundle of sets, especially for the developers. Another feature is the application accelerator, which is a part of the application. So typically, imagine you have an application team that made already a great integration in single sign-on, or you have a new integration in a backend system from your uh, 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 mainframe or database system, and you want to reuse the code. Then we have a template engine integrated in the product. So it takes a code and uh, uh, anonymize it and put it in a, in a kit, in a, in a version. So you can browse then the, the portal and all your developer teams working next to you, they, they can put their code in that library. And then you automatically can click the code and say, oh, there's already a database integration that I can use. And uh, you take that give a new git source and you give now a, a, a new name and it automatically generates you the, the project out of it. So it's, a, it's a, a lot of cool stuff involved and this is the, call it the Tunsil application platform. And uh, I know my time is almost over, but uh, we have a, a desk in the beginning when you come in next to the food and by the way, next to us, very important, is the fridge with the beer. Okay, exactly. So we are very, very happy when, when you join us afterwards and the beer is there and uh, have a beer or two and discuss about the details about the application platform. That's all from my side. Thank you for listening.